Am I the antagonist for expecting my partner to clean? Am I the asshole for expecting my boyfriend to help around the house without being told exactly what to do? A little background information my current boyfriend and I have been on again off again since August of 2021. He is 34 and I am 24. I have a full-time job and recently bought a house in October of 2023. He made a lot of bad choices in his past, so is still in the process of getting his bachelor's degree. He graduates in May 2024 and then has been accepted to a pharmacy graduate program starting August 2024, which is 2.5 hours away from where I bought my house. No, I'm not moving with him. My boyfriend stays at my house typically Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, and maybe one or two weekday nights, so he's here fairly often. If he's not here, he lives with his dad full-time. My boyfriend does not pay any bills at my house nor his dad's house and pays only for his car payment and car insurance. He works part-time and maybe makes $14 an hour. So when he comes over, he walks the dog and may cook us dinner. I told him he doesn't help make life easier one night after a 70-hour work week I had. I mentioned to him that he never cleans, vacuums the house, mops the floors, wipes the kitchen counters down, or help clean the bathrooms. He told me I should have to tell him what to do, but he doesn't mind help. He explained he doesn't notice when things are dirty around the house, but I do because of my obsessive-compulsive disorder. He explained I should not expect him to clean the house, and it was unfair for me to expect him to take initiative and clean the house without being told what to do. He explained after a long day at work he doesn't think about coming home to do additional chores at the house. Lastly, he said he unloads and loads the dishwasher which was helping. I told him he is an adult and should be able to notice when the house needs to be vacuumed or counters need to be wiped down and it would help me a lot. I explained to him I do his laundry on a regular basis to help him out but he doesn't do much to make life easier for me. After about five minutes of this conversation, he said his heart was pounding out of his chest and needed some space, grabbed his beer and walked out to my living room and that's basically where the conversation ended. So am I the asshole for expecting my boyfriend to help around the house without being told exactly what to do? It sounds like you are carrying a lot of responsibilities and could use some more support around the house, especially after long work weeks. It's fair to expect your boyfriend as an adult to take initiative in helping with household chores without constant direction considering the time you both spend at your place. Perhaps finding a balance where both of you contribute to making life easier for each other could lead to a happier and more harmonious living situation. Am I the antagonist for following my contract and doing my new apartment's inventory? Hello, I, 18 years old female, am a first year student. Recently, I moved to a new apartment in order to live closer to my campus. This story is between me, my mother, and a couple of landlords. Yesterday, I moved to the new apartment. My mother was with me because I needed help moving all my stuff. We noticed that my apartment had some issues and was pretty dirty, so we decided to take some photos and to write this stuff down. Because it was written in the contract that we needed to do an inventory, which had to signal any damage or abnormalities found in the apartment, me and my mom did exactly that. We wrote an inventory. Inside, we told the landlords the abnormalities we found, such as broken smoke detectors, no ripped curtains, tartar in the shower and toilets, damaged walls, stained sofa. While this inventory was taking notice of many damages, it was not a critique in any way. It's just the procedure, and it ensures that I'm not getting in trouble for damages that I didn't cause. Actually, despite its issues, I'm pretty happy to be living in this place. When the landlords got the email with the inventory, they took it very personally and were basically very mad. The lady called my mom and was being pretty aggressive towards her about our list of complaints. Her husband wrote me a salty email saying that the apartment was just old, that they never had any problem before, and that I was more than welcome to leave and find a better apartment if I was not happy. The thing is that my mother and I never had the intention to hurt their precious feelings. We just did as we were told in the contract and made an inventory. It's not our fault the apartment had issues, and it wouldn't have made sense to overlook these issues in a paper made to take notice of those issues. Now the landlord, husband, wants to see me for some reasons. He does not seem very happy with me. Am I the asshole for doing an honest inventory and thus respecting the contract the landlords wrote? T.S. Forgive my grammar issues, I'm from France. It sounds like you and your mom were just following the rules by making an inventory of the apartment's issues, which is totally fair. It's important to communicate openly and honestly with your landlords, even if they react emotionally. You're not in the wrong for being thorough and transparent. Am I the antagonist for not letting my in-laws see my children every weekend? My wife. 36, and I, 29, have one-year-old twin boys and my in-laws have been very involved since day one. They lived at my house for three months last year, helping out and stayed over every weekend last summer. And now we're over every weekend, just one day at least. And at least two to three FaceTimes a week with the boys as well as almost nightly phone calls with my wife about the boys. And a shared photo album application where we upload pictures of the boys and they all comment on them. And if they miss a week, you know for certain they'll be over the next weekend. My in-laws also don't listen to us when it comes to handling our kids. We have certain ways we want to feed Ray's play with them and they do not listen to us when we tell them to stop doing this or don't do that. I'm the grandma I get to do whatever I want and it always is with good intentions and that's all that matters. 
so when they're over, it's not exactly a stress-free environment. So when they recently did not come over on a weekend because my wife said that she didn't want them over, I thought maybe we could work towards maybe less time with them coming over. The last time we went more than one weekend not seeing them was when they were away this past October. Otherwise, it's been just about every weekend or every other weekend since late 2022. I told my wife that I am feeling overwhelmed, uncomfortable, and suffocated by how often her parents are over, and I wish we could cut down on their visits to maybe once a month, or at least not so rigidly scheduled. She did not like that and got mad at me. She said that her parents not going to be around forever, and it's important for the boys to have a relationship with their grandparents. I clarified for her that it's not that I don't want her parents in my children's life. I just want some alone time with my wife and kids and maybe see my side of the family. My wife is very close with her family. If I'm being honest, I think a little too close, but I don't think I'm being unreasonable. Am I the a-hole for asking for less frequent visits from grandparents, down to maybe once a month? While it's wonderful that your in-laws are so involved in your children's lives, it's completely understandable that you'd like some quality time with just your immediate family. Communicating your feelings with your wife about wanting a bit more space and balance is completely valid, and finding a compromise that works for both of you is key in maintaining a harmonious family dynamic. Would I be the asshole if I force my partner to put themselves in the situation I'm in because I think it'll be better for us? My girlfriend lived with her mother-in-law in early 2023, and then her mother-in-law started the process to sell the house with a month or more of possible homelessness for my girlfriend and my girlfriend's three cats. My girlfriend moved in with me but her cats weren't able to. She couldn't bring her cats to family as the family actively said they would put the indoor raised cats outside. I texted my mom to try to see if she could hold them for a month. My mom cleaned out the animal room by moving the storage from that room to her room. She sleeps in a separate room from stepdad because stepdad's dogs lay on his bed. Her losing her room because of animals again is not lost on me. The cats end up there for almost three months. Multiple times my mom has helped me and those connected to me. My first serious girlfriend lived there for a bit before I moved out entirely. When I needed money for groceries, mom would spot me $30 or $50. When mom would come by for a day to hang out, she'd get me some groceries. She'd regularly help with rent for me and my sister. And I can't be more grateful for that support. It's more than most anyone deserves. Well, the mother-in-law offered my girlfriend a room at the mother-in-law's new house a few states away. I was incredibly hesitant, knowing how overbearing the mother-in-law was to my girlfriend, but I still let my girlfriend know I would understand and support her decision if we made things long distance. Ultimately, my girlfriend chose to stay by me. The mother-in-law sweetened the deal with the room being rent-free, which my girlfriend still declined, and then sweetened with land being put in my girlfriend's name so she could build a house, which my girlfriend also declined. Finally, I was invited and it was on the table for the both of us. I tell everyone that I will be moving with my girlfriend, and I have a going away party with friends from work and a separate one with family. I get the equivalent of $1,500 from my mom in the form of a PC on my way out, and a statement from my mom of if you ever need to come back, just give me a call. The second day we were here, after a 13-hour drive, the father-in-law made a comment about rent, to which my girlfriend blew up as we were told it would be rent-free. Turns out the mother-in-law didn't tell the father-in-law we'd be rent-free. My girlfriend has multiple times said that she hates it here, that she wants to go back to Florida, and she has also stated that she hates the mother-in-law and would want to create space for a while with limited contact or no contact. I have made it clear to my girlfriend that my main goal is to leave the mother-in-law and father-in-law completely and go no contact. I've called my mom multiple times after fights between my girlfriend and the mother-in-law, asking for specifics on living there for me and my girlfriend. My girlfriend regularly says that she would be wholly against living with my mom, but that she'd come with me if I ever left. I felt terrible hearing that letting my girlfriend know that I want to make her happy at my own expense, and that her saying that actively disincentivizes me to leave to where I have my support system back. I feel like saving up to move back is the best way forward, and my girlfriend agrees, but I know it would be easier to just stay with my mom for a bit to get on our feet. It sounds like you and your girlfriend are going through a tough situation with conflicting living arrangements. It's important to prioritize both your girlfriend's comfort and your own well-being, even if it means making some tough decisions about where to live and who to rely on for support. Am I the antagonist for not introducing my fiancé to my parents sooner? My fiancé and I have been together for four years. My siblings have met him, but my parents have not. I got divorced a long time ago and my parents were awful to me about it. It was the worst time of my life. My ex was cheating and doing a lot behind my back. To not get too much into detail, he gave me extreme anxiety and I was afraid to go home most nights. Our marriage was only a year because I was unsafe. The divorce needed to happen, but at the same time I have never been so hurt and so lonely when it did. I lost all of my friends because they were all his friends. He took most of my money without me noticing, and when I tried to fight that he said his wealthy parents would pay for a lawyer, and he knew my parents would never help me, and because he took my money, I can't afford it. So I let it go. When I told my parents I was getting divorced, they were furious. 
They were so ashamed and kept on saying how shameful this is and what are people going to think of them. Never did they ask what I was going through and how embarrassed they are of me. They also explicitly said they don't want to meet any new man until I was engaged. They cared more about what they would look like rather than what I was going through. This was the worst time in my life because not only did I lose someone I thought I would be with forever, my parents were now no longer talking to me because of it. I found out about a year ago that my mom never told her siblings I got divorced, and she has pretended for years that I was still happily married, all because she is ashamed. They found out recently I was divorced because of my wedding invite. Fast forward eight years, I am now happily engaged to the love of my life. We have lived together for three years and we get along so well. We never fight besides the usual bickers. He is my twin flame and just my perfect match and I am so excited to have my real dream wedding and be so happy with him. I honestly don't even remember my last wedding because it was so traumatic, so this is truly the wedding where I want my little girl dreams to come true. Anyways, when I got engaged my mom said she was happy for me, and my sister said she was ranting about how she hasn't even met this person. I was planning on flying out for the whole family to meet him, we have lived in different states for about 10 years, but at the same time, I don't really care about their opinion. They can come if they want but how they treated me after my divorce really hurt our relationship, and I have no interest in their opinions. My sister thinks I need to give them a chance and let them try again, which I'm happy to do but I don't want to inconvenience myself for it. We'll be there for a family event in July, and I was thinking of just introducing him at the same time. Am I the asshole for not caring to go out of my way for them to get to know my fiancé, or for not involving them in our wedding planning caring about their opinion? Should I be giving them another chance? You are not the asshole for prioritizing your own happiness and well-being over appeasing your parents' expectations especially considering how they treated you during your divorce. It's understandable that you may be hesitant to involve them in your wedding planning or prioritize their opinions given the history of their unsupportive behavior. Ultimately, it's important to prioritize your own feelings and boundaries in this situation. Am I the antagonist for saying a two versus one argument was a lost cause? Myself, 21, my cousin, 20, my aunt, 50, oh, and my sister, 29, were all sitting in the car. My aunt and cousin were having a two, them versus one my sister argument my sister was visibly frustrated i can relate my sister isn't around all the time usually it's just me my aunt and my cousin and yes she raised him so of course they agree on a lot of things it is what it is it's just exhausting trying to prove a point to two people that constantly gas each other up encourage and validate each other i'm sure that's not their intention but that's how it feels to anyone arguing against the two i'm a huge advocate for prioritizing mental health and you know that's my sister so I spoke to her specifically and said, forget it, it's a lost cause, after she literally put her head down in frustration. I'm sitting right next to her so my intention wasn't for the whole car to hear. Immediate uproar. My aunt in a strong tone says, you're wrong, you can't say that, you're dismissing the conversation. My cousin is agreeing with her and they're talking at the same time so it's loud. I'm now annoyed because she just said my opinion is wrong, I've bitten my tongue for a lot to keep the peace, and I made a promise that I won't do that anymore. It's dehumanizing, I said I'm just speaking how I feel. They say, that's not how you stop a conversation, it's dismissing us. I told them, I'm entitled to my opinion, why are you yelling? She says in a very loud strong tone, I don't feel like I was yelling. You're lying on my name. You're a liar. I won't stand here and let you lie on my name. She made me look up the definition of yelling and surprise I was right. So let's check in, within a couple of minutes, you said my opinion is wrong and I'm a liar. At no point did I name call. Side note. I did tell her last year, which she brought up, that she acts like she knows everything and she proved that point. I can't give my opinion without immediately being told, you're wrong. I feel I shouldn't have to walk on eggshells to not hurt your feelings, especially when I was not talking to you in the first place. Why do you even care what I think? Am I the a-hole for saying a two versus one argument was a lost cause? The argument, the conversation was about choices, specifically related to crack. My sister said, name a situation where someone's only option is crack. Someone gave the example of a rape victim. My sister argued that it's a choice as to what to do after the situation happens. My aunt misconstrues this and says, So you think getting R-worded is a choice? The mental gymnastics my aunt plays. As a victim myself, I was paying attention to the conversation. My sister's words were, You can control what you do after that, and how do you seek help, unless you're threatened, that's completely different. It sounds like a challenging situation with a lot of emotions running high in the car. While it's important to stand up for what you believe in, Maybe finding a calmer way to express your thoughts could help avoid misunderstandings and unnecessary conflicts in the future. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.